Hello and welcome to our performance Holiday on Ice. I'm Victor and this is Katrine. Uh, I will start to say that I hope you understand my English. I'm really confused between Danish and Swedish right now, so the English is just too much, but I hope you understand it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, what you're going to take part of now is uh, our video documentation from our travel to Lapland or Satmi, as it's also called. Uh, both me and Catherine is very interested in the idea of society. What is a society and what could it be? And what potential is there today to create a total new society? And lately we have been really interested in Marx and Engels theory about primitive communism and how that maybe looks like today. So we're at, we were, yeah, we were really, we want to find this out. Yeah. So, to do this we uh, had to leave the city and go up to Kirana in the north of Sweden. Uh, we're just going to start by introducing you to some uh, historical events and some expressions. So, let's start with that. Yes. Um, the primitive communism. The primitive communism is the state of origin of the human society. A period where, with no classes, where people live together in tribes as hunters and gatherers with a few or no material decisions. The society's structures then change with the development of tools for agriculture and the production of food. The improved working procedures created an abundance of products, which meant that there was now something that could be called classes, where one or few people took care of the profit and possessed it like a type of capital. So you can say that this was the birth of the private property and the def definite death of the primitive communism. Then the question is, why have we gotten so interested in the primitive communism, and what is its potential today? We live in a society with economic politics that's evidently cracking. The gap between classes is increasing, and the whole financial system is swaying. It's obvious that the, that the political and economical system is unstable, and has its own executioner living in itself. But at the same time, we're looking back with disappointment on the previous socialist attempts gone bad, everywhere from Soviet to China. Is it something in their application of Marxism that they forgot, or maybe ignored, or didn't understand? With the solution at hand, one of the fundamental errors must have been the mode of production. The problems stem from the political ideas regarding the mode of production. It was of course completely unsustainable from an environmental perspective. But also Marx uh, had another point of criticism regarding this, namely his philosophical concept of alienation which got erased from Marx's books during Stalin's time, Stalin's time, when it didn't fit into his state capitalistic doctrine. Karl Marx meant that the worker is alienated through a clearly stratified division of labor during paid work. The human was alienated from the product of one's work since one was not producing it for its own use thereby being alienated from the work itself. Marx means that the manifestation of the human nature is to work creatively and in that way create one's own reality. In other words, the human is creating its own society and reality. But since we're now alienated from what we create, it makes us alienated from our whole society and the people who live in it. And in the end, it goes so far that we don't recognize ourselves as humans anymore. This is also like a downward spiral in our time, when the concept about constant growth is so dominating, because Marx means that the more we produce, the more alienated we get from the world. Therefore, the idea about constant growth 
is in fact the same as the idea about constant increase of alienation. But then hasn't Marx described any other way than this seemingly state capitalistic production apparatus? that may, in some aspects, be able to cure these philosophical and climate change problems? Yes. And that is where the primitive communism comes in. Here, we can obtain important theories for a green socialism and a socialism that is built on a collective, with a societal machinery that doesn't destroy our Earth or alienate people. Something that's also interesting is the Marxistic disagreement regarding if this stage in society has ever existed. The discussion has been more of a historic dispute rather than a discussion about whether we could be able to reach such a stage. And is this stage even desirable? The question is obviously not about whether we'll be able to recreate the primitive communism that once might have been but rather about how this primitive communism would look today. And that's why we took off to Sapmi to research for eventual traces and possibilities. Sapmi, as you can see here on the map, in the red, is the Sami's land in Norway, Sweden, Russia and Finland. It's the land that makes up the Sami's original area of settlement. The area is about 388,000 square kilometers in size, around nine times the size of Denmark, with a population of totally 2,300,000 inhabitants, where 80,000 are Samis. However, there's a lot of disagreement about who can be noted as a Sami, which further makes it hard to clarify, clarify how many Samis there actually are. Then who are the Samis? The Samis were the first population group that lived in Scandinavia. As we said earlier, it's a little unclear how many there actually are, but we can estimate that around 15,000 to 18,000 Samis live in Sweden. However, the majority of Samis live in Stockholm. The Samis have their own language. There are several types of Sami languages, and therefore it's possible that Samis from different places don't understand each other. Reindeer herding, hunting and fishing has always been a central part of the Sami culture. In Sweden, herding reindeer is an exclusive right of the Samis. But herding reindeer takes a lot of space, and it's often outmaneuvered by the Swedish state's extraction of ore and other resources that they found in the Swedish mines up north. Above all, it's the state-owned LKAB that conducts large-scale mining industry in Sápmi. According to UN's ILO Convention 169, the Samis are classified as a native population. Sweden recognized the Samis as an indigenous population in 1977, but they still haven't signed the convention. ELO's Convention 169 was accepted on the 27th of June in 1989. It builds on the principle from UN's other human rights declarations. The main purpose of it is to serve as a protection for the indigenous population to avoid being non-voluntarily assimilated. Today, Sweden is the only Nordic country that hasn't signed the convention. This is done with the, reference, with the reference to the uncertainty about what it would mean to Swedish politics and economy, but also for Samis that don't herd reindeer. That is the burning issue for the Swedish part who would have the rights to the land if the convention who would have the rights to the land if the convention is signed. Would that mean that the land where we conduct profitable mining industry would be given back to the reindeer owning Samis? Something that also should be kept in mind is that the Sami, the Sapmi comprises 52% of Sweden's area. And it's very unclear what formal rights the Sami would 
get over that area if Sweden signed the convention. There's also a big conflict between Samis regarding the ELO. The 10% of Samis that own reindeer obviously want it signed, since it would give them access to a much bigger property. Furthermore, the hunting and fishing Samis don't want it signed, because that would implicate that they will be classed as second-class Samis, while the reindeer-owning Samis would be owners over their property and in that way be classed as first-class Samis, which would essentially give them a greater influence in the Sami society. As this conflict is going on, LKAB, mining industry, is expanding across the northern landscape, while the conflict is under constant investigation. And this is where our city Kirana becomes very interesting. Kirana is the northernmost city in Sweden. 18,000 people live here, and from a historical perspective, the city only exists because ore was found here. The city was founded by an LKA boss in the 1900s. In Kirin, we also have the Sami Assembly. The Sami Assembly is the Sami's political authority and has parties and elections. It's a counseling body under the Swedish government. The Sami Assembly can make decisions that the government subsequently can approve or not. The Sami Assembly is in fact in Kiruna, which suits us perfectly because then we could interview people from the Assembly. In Kiruna we also have LKAB. LKAB was started up as a private company but a lively debate in Swedish parliament flared up when they realized what enormous resources were present on Swedish property. The debate was first and foremost about whether the state should be running the mining of the ore. The conservatives wanted to socialize and the liberals wanted to keep it privately owned. In 1907's election, the Swedish right-wing conservative party won, and it was, it was decided that 50% of the mines should be socialized, with an option that the rest of the mines should be socialized 50 years later, which then happened in 1957. For the ones that are interested, Bo Jonsson has written a dissertation on this topic called The State and the Oil Fields. LKAB is also known from the Great Mine Strike in 1969 to 1970. It started with 35 workers that started a sit strike. The reason for the strike was mainly the wages and the working conditions. The strike spread, spread rapidly and after just a few days there was a strike committee and over, uh, over 5,000 strikers. The strike was not through any working labor or union, so the strike was therefore illegal. After a lot of tough discussions and disagreements, the strike finally paid off in a 14% better wage and new wage determination system. Through this victory, the strike strategy spread throughout the country, and during the start of the 70s in Sweden, one could see a lot of wild strikes. The following years came to influence Sweden's politics with regard, regards to workers' rights. But where were the Samis in all of this? At the same time as the Swedish workers were on strike, there was a group that relatively seemed stood completely outside the Swedish history books. The history is more about bitter conflict between Swedish employers and workers. At the same time as that discussion was going on, a constant increase of the exploitation of Sápmi was seen. And this is not the first time that the Samis have been overlooked in the Swedish history lectures. <laughs> the historic <coughs> conflict between Sweden and the Samis. Everyone seems to be in relative agreement regarding the historic events between the Samis and the Swedish state. The Samis have been colonized by the Swedes. It really started to take off in the 1500s. In the 1600s, it happened that the Swedes would use the Samis as slaves. 
and deeply racist politics were pursued towards the Samis. The Samis didn't have the right to practice their own religion, the shamanism, and were forced to convert to Christianity. In the 19s, Karenia from Samis were measured as a race biological experiment. The Swedish state did not employ a Sami if there was an unemployed Swede. Samis didn't have rights to own their own house or property. They weren't allowed in Swedish schools and had to attend special nomad schools so they could continue their reindeer herding, which was now seen as something exotic. Many kids were driven away from their homes and got an insufficient education compared to Swedish children due to the restricted attendance to nomadic schools only. In periods, the state has treated the Samis as objects in a museum that should be kept away from all sorts of technological and intellectual development. In 1928, the, the Swedish state decided that only reindeer owners were allowed to call themselves Samis. This classical way to divide and rule has worked pretty good for the colonial power, since it's still very unclear who can be counted as a Sami and what property belongs to whom. It's in fact because of these uncertainties that Sweden has still not signed the ELO. And this is our trip. Kiruna, where we have LKB, and the Samating, and Evro Sopro, where we went to visit Brit Marie and Penis. Brit Marie and Penis are also reindeer owners. They are Samis. We visit them in their home in Evro Sopro, around 120 kilometers northwest of Kiruna. They are both born and raised in the village. Yeah. So that's the background story. And now we would like to show you our videos. I just have to say that uh, Victor and I were uh, disagreeing a little bit about, about what happened uh, in, in uh, Kiruna. So we made each our video. So I can just start with mine. <laughs> Det kommunistiske manifest er Marx og Engels. Alle hidtidige samfundshistorie er en klassekamp i historie. Fodlunger. Det er jo nøjagtigt udtrykt at sige, at den historie, der er skriftlig overleveret, i 1847 kendte man så godt som ingenting til samfundets forhistorie. Den samfundsorganisation, der gik forud for alt nedskrevet historie. Senere har Hagshausen opdaget landsbyfællesskabet i Rusland, og efterhånden blev man klar over, at landsbykommuner med jordfællesskab var samfundets urform. Men med opløsningen af det der i fællesskab, begynder samfundet at spandes i særlige klasser, der ender med at stå i modsætning til hinanden. Det her er noget, vi alle genkender i vores vestlige verden. Men findes der samfund, som ikke behøver gå den individualiserede kapitalismes vej? Det er ret vildt. Det er sådan, at jeg er sådan helt Mm. Fordi at han dyrkede deres naturtro. 
Ja. Det er bare meget vildt, at de også havde sådan noget for at få sådan Det der gør også. Ja. Mm. Altså. Ja, altså jeg... Puh, ja. Jeg har virkelig underlig med det her på rigtig, rigtig mange punkter. Altså... Mm. Øhm, jeg... Føler simpelthen, at det er den mest undertrykte institution, der nærmest findes. Nå, det er jo også simpelthen ikke okay. Hvad skal du? Okay, under tykkelsen har det været på dit. Det er sjovt. Men jeg kan mærke, at jeg som menneske, og det er jo ikke fordi jeg tilhører et urfolk, men mig som et individ, som jeg kunne godt kunne tænke mig måske at gøre op med nogle strukturer i samfundet. Jeg føler mig pisse undertrykt af det her, den her mastodont. Hmm. 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 Please respect the art. Det var det, når man kalder kolonisering for kunst lige pludselig. Jeg mener, at man ikke kan gøre så her, som det ikke vil, og se at vi skal bare gå til en riktning for at forsøke at finde noget arena. Jeg mener, at det var her vores mamma større end så. Men må jeg lige prøve at sige noget? Jeg siger bare, at jeg synes, at man ender nogle turistfælder, hvis man bare får opsøg regler. Altså så, er det, altså så er der mange 100% på sådan en eller anden ren gård, som er til kun for turister, altså jeg synes lige så godt, vi kan gå, altså, og så må vi fandme se, hvor vi ender, men man kan se, der er ren gård i stedet noget. Det er virkelig godt kalier. Det er bare sådan, det er jo ikke et fantastisk kyr. Han lever af, og... So, hello everybody, and welcome to this tour, which will take us to the mine that we have here in Kiruna. My name is Evelina, and our bus driver here is Janne. So, please use your safety belt. So... Some facilities. It's in the foot wall we are from right now, you say. The other side of the orbit, this side is into why Kiruna needs to needs to open. Yeah. So the ground is like collapsing all the time. I'm not for being taken down for steady. Stain sigh for my and they are they are fake. Se, han har blitt så god syng. Men hvad tænker du da? Jamen, jeg, man gøre det? jamen jeg synes, at uh, man skal drive ud med parlamentarisk aktivistisk politik, altså. Nå, Katrine, hvad er vej nu? Jamen lige nu sidder vi her ved folk, der skal og venter dem. Der kører rundt her i byen øh, og får rundt her. Og 
jeg må alle tænke mig om, at jeg glæder mig rigtig meget til, at vores sang skal være kommer og hente os i vækstet ude. Nu, nu, nej, ja. Så följer hon någon som hjälper på stöd. 
träffade oss som svenskar så följde jag lite att det är mitt ansvar. Ja, i samma sak. Jag följde mig vara medskyldig på att jag är svensk. Du vill inte att du inte är hon som ropar målet. Mm. Eller för deras kamp oss. Ja, det är du. Ja. Det är ju lite som att man har gjort en dem till någon offer vi att skulle representera deras stämma. Ja, och kan man nog göra det. Ja, precis. Men det är också så här, då kan vi inte göra något med dem sen heller. Mm. Så kan jag inte säga att det är väldigt mycket som kan komma till att det är gott. Mm. Alltså visst man inte kan få kämpa någon annans kamp. Men mm. det är också min kamp, alltså det är mänsklighetens kamp. Mm. Så jag, alltså jag tycker inte man kan se det så, det är inte så nämnt. Mm. Alltså om jag skulle ta samman och ha en kamp så är det min kamp också för att samla mm. mänsklighet. Mm. Det tänker jag. Nu har jag åkt in i Kodup på en varg och nu ska jag kalla in och spöra om det finns några här redan i den här. Ursäkta, det är nöjd i om det finns någon regn som har svart. Jag kunde börja nästan inte. Hej! Nu är vi äntligen hemma från dagens tur. Och vi har ont i mina fötter efter allt vi har gått från den här fucking renarna för att finna dem. Och det ska säga att vi fick inte mer på filmen, så det kommer oss ren ajn. Ren ajn hjärnan. Ren ajn. Ren ajn. Kom och snackade med oss när vi tog upp maten. Och då spörde jag, hur många renar har du? Och då blev det, det fick jag inte göra. Och det syns jag är virkelig... Det där beror Ja, och det syns jag var märkligt. Visst, jag ska förstå produktionsförhållen. Alltså hur han, han arbetar, hur, hur, hur hans takt är. Alltså, så, så syns jag vitt, det är en befogad spörsmål. Okej, okay. men, men då kan vi... Då kan... Alltså, till av perspektiv vi känner produktionsförhållen. Mm. Alltså, det, det är... Men det är väl lite det vi försöker göra i den här idén. Att alltså, vi försöker finna ut av hur han de lever. Och hvis vi ikke kan finde ud af produktionsforhold, så synes jeg, det er helt mindre fløjt. Jeg synes, jeg... Men hvis man med et marxistisk synspunkt kigger på det her, altså, så er det jo på en eller anden måde nærmest en antikapitalistisk statement. Men ændringen er jo som en maskine. Det er det. Altså ændringen er et produktionsforhold, som, som, han, som han eller hun tjener penge på. Altså det, 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 så, altså, det er det, jeg... Det er det, altså, efter at snakke med ham i dag, så har jeg på en eller anden måde forstået, altså, altså ren egne, det är ju som det är borgerklassen som säger men. Alltså det är det. Alltså det är de, de äger produktionsmedel som oss eh, alltså, så, som ackumuleras. Alltså ackumulation i form av fortplantning. Att det blir fler renor med att de får barn. Så det, är ju, det, det, det fungerar ju lite precis på samma princip som kapitalismen. Det är fullständigt. Det är faktiskt fullständigt. Men det är lite kul för oss som vi har byggt ut. Att det är ju mycket så här... Swedish middle class eh, dream. Det finns ju ingen som helst eh, arbetarklassföljelse eller några röda faner eller alltså, några marxistiska porträtt eller något som helst. Det syns bara stadigare. Det är lite skruffin när det har rein, rein sagt om tidigare. Alltså, det är en riktig säg med arena och den är bevisligen alltså, den borgare klassen.
skolan. Så det var lite som att de levde, lever all allmänliga medelklass livet på en annan håll. Fast de gör det här upp i nåt. Så jag fyrkligt skuffad. Det var lite nyligt bra till tingen. Faktiskt. Det är viktigt. Men jag har rätt så den här på det. Och det är ju glad över. Jag ska nog försöka snacka med han i aften senare. Ingen? Jag ska bara gå... Jag ska bara säga hej till Rena. Va, va, ska du in? Ska du spis på dem? Swedish gold. Det var med vi fick min. Jag ska se vad som är så fucking viktigt att vi kan spisa. Nu kommer de. Vi tar det där. Vi tar det där. Det där är min. Alltså det här det gör bara mot mig och Britt Marie och Kenneth. Nej, på sist. Har du givit upp alla idéer? Jag tror att det är livsfarligt det här. Har du givit upp alla dina socialistiska idéer? Nej, det har jag överhuvudet inte. Nej, men varför som det? Nej, jag arbetar för ett kollektiv. Nej, men varför kan du då säga att det är fett när det är kun en ren som drar ställd? Är det okej att vi slår ut den om vi tar? Jag tror bara vi är dö och tvärt ut. Jag tror att vi inte kan sova här. Och sen att vi ser den här tingen här på norra. Den här individualistiska tankegången. Så jag kan inte ha honom. Är det du gör? person in the audience who just can read this. Is somebody willing to read? Just read, it's very easy. Can you read it? Can you read it? Yeah. Can you read it over here? Dear audience, you're gonna play the role of Katrina. You should say what it says in the text and do what it says in the parentheses. The audience? Yeah, it's, you can start with you. Okay. So you're Katrina right now. Oh. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to reproduce the discussion that we've had. It's about whether we should show any interviews or not and in what way we should do it. Sit down on your chair, it says. We are the artists, and this is a work of art. A lecture performance, I think it's unnecessary to include others in this performance. I think it's problematic. Yes, but this is still a site-specific work of art in a way. It's relating to our experience of the landscape and the natives out there. Therefore, it's important to get some insight into the lives of the people we've talked to, and also to get an understanding of our experience. Okay, but I think the most important thing is that they got an insight into our thoughts. Yeah, that certainly <laughs> will get. But are you really th saying that you think it's that important to include the Sami's voice in this performance? Seen from our subjective perspective, we've actually been up there physically and collected material. But if you're making uh, if you're making a play about homeless people, for example, then you're telling a story about homeless people, aren't you? Yes. And since you yourself are not homeless but an artist, does that mean that you must include some groups with homeless people in your show? I 
I mean, that all theatre works are more or less documentary. In that moment, we have a text, a manuscript, then it turns into a document that is staged, into a constructed reality. The text has the aim to, in some way, reflect upon the world. And it is us, as artists, who decide what the text should shed light on, and from that, at what angle it meet, and from, and from what angle. It means that we decide what reality we want to produce or reproduce. So the fact that every work of art contains a world view cannot be avoided, and you can't cover all possible perspectives on your work of art. No, <laughs> but you can try to encourage the audience to expand their views and try to understand the complexity of any certain conflicts. Constructed reality. Okay. <laughs> yeah. To come back to what you said about complexity, some conflict conflicts aren't as complex as complex as they claim to be. Often, it's the strong and oppressing part in this conflict that fights for calling the conflict complex. And by doing that, they appear equal to the oppressed. I'm so tired of everything having to be so complex. It's a postmodern disease. There's still a difference between reality and art. The art must be allowed to be complex. That's why I think it's important to shed light on the role of the artist in the work. Or do you mean that as an artist, you are automatically an exploiter? If you're telling someone else a story, no matter how to do it. Maybe not necessarily, but take the ice hotel for example. Maybe the ice hotel is perceived as exploitation of the Sami's land and culture, if you're constantly telling the story that it actually is exploitation. Maybe there's nothing wrong about the place itself, but rather the story about it. All right, but then what? Should you just stop telling stories? Then we can just stop making art altogether. No, you don't have to be that cynical. This project is actually more about our story than the Sami's story. No, we're sitting here. But I think it's a tragic art world. If the art world should only tell stories about itself, that would be completely reactionary. And how can this be about us? We are just sitting in the audience. <laughs> no, we're sitting here. In a way, I think this is the essence of theatre. What we are doing now, using other bodies. You can also say that we are exposing other people. We are deciding what they are going to say. Yeah, but otherwise they won't say anything. <laughs> How do you know? I guess we could try. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We are now going to show the videos of the interviews with the Samis we, we met up there.
Uh, and unfortunately, the, the subtitles uh, doesn't work on this one, but I hope you'll understand it.
I mean, they, they, they learn from each other, they live together in primitive communism. When, when they take political decisions, they do it in a consensus democracy. Uh, they don't produce more than they need, they don't start uh, imperialistic wars, and, and they certainly don't produce weapons like your welfare state does. Oh. Yeah, but, you know, they don't produce weapons because they don't know how to do it. And <laughs> if they think that they will win a war, they will go to war. I'm totally sure about that. Okay. I'm not so sure about that. I mean, I think war is a disease of uh, capitalism, not uh, primitive communism. Yeah, I, don't, it's, I think it sounds a little bit um, like you want me and everyone else who represent the Sami society to just be absolutely assimilated. <laughs> I mean, in your world order, you would have that all indigenous people should just be eradicated because they don't contribute to uh, industrial growth. I think that's... It's not capitalistic. I don't speak from a capitalistic point of view. I don't speak about the growth for the free market. I am speaking about the growth of the Swedish state, the Swedish welfare system, and especially the Swedish working class. Okay, but this welfare state, yeah, uh, it's it's made by the majority of Swedes. What what does it do for their minorities? I mean, the only people who can navigate in this state is the majority, the the white Christian. A Swedish middle class who work from nine to five. What about homeless people? What about refugees? What about uh, people with um, some mental illness? What about uh, Sami people? I mean, the majority doesn't really care about these. No, people. that's totally wrong. It's the Sami people who don't care about any others than themselves. They always talk about you and I, us and them. They don't want to be a part of a collective. They don't want to pay taxes. And I find, think your argument is so strange that. Uh, a mental disordered person in south of Sweden should have it better if the, the people in north could live peacefully with their reindeers. For me, it sounds like the person in the south should have it better if we have four more billions in tax income to get a better, better health care. Okay, uh, it's, just to make it clear, for me it's not about uh, the Sami and the reindeer versus better health care, it's about the way that a society treats their minorities. And I think by acknowledging the Samis and, and their land and giving them their land back, uh, then it's... Yeah. it's yeah, you said, you said giving the land back. back. So you go into private property now. You think it, it, it's acceptable with private property. You think we should own a land. Individuals should own our nature. That's not so good. No, I'm talking about administrative rights. Over yeah. the okay, land. I don't care what you say, what label you put it on. But for me, I think in Sweden we all should live under the same rules. We're all together. Okay. Well, that, that's that's very beautiful, but but these rules are made by the Swedish majority. I think it's a very interesting question, this one about uh, native populations. I mean, what what would you do with the uh, Aborigines? What would you do with the Inuits? What would you do with Mayans? I mean, all these native populations of the world, maybe they don't contribute with uh, four billion Swedish kroner in taxes, but but they're humans. I think I think this is very racist. No, I think you are the racist right now. You are talking that people should be treated differently because according to the skin or the blood in their veins. And that argument they have, we were here first, our ethnicity makes us the rightful owner of this place. I don't buy it. It's like a second world war fought. We drop it. Please. Okay, but that's that's very easy for you to say coming from a post colonial perspective. But you know that as oppressed people is always right. Yeah, oppressed people is always right. And that's why I think it's strange that 2,000 reindeer owners should own 52% of Sweden. 2,000. 52% of Sweden. But okay, let's take an example here. Now we have land here. The audience is a land. We call the audience the pillow land. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, and where is... Yeah, you can, you can take this one. So, let's pretend that... You, you don't, you just need to sit this one. You came here first. He is here first in this land. That means that that guy can choose and he owns all the pillows. So please, could we uh, gather all the pillows to that guy? We just, all the pillows around him. This is really good. Yeah, yeah, exactly, that's my point. Come on, quicker. <laughs> Okay. There's one down there. Where? 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 This guy's leaning on one. He's just oh. not secure. Oh, <laughs> 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 I was here for a 
I'm older than him. Okay, <laughs> you're old name. Okay, the but that, that I should have the fucking pillows. Give me the pillows. <laughs> exactly. Give me the this, fucking pillows. This is what now. I mean. This is what I mean. This is what your socialism looks like. <laughs> This is, what, this is my point. Yeah, okay. But they are already starting to fight about these IKEA yeah. Swedish produced pillows. Yeah. Uh, but, but what I'm just trying to say is that. Uh, I don't know who. Maybe you were here first. I don't know. But, anyways, you're very nice Sami people. He's 22. And he's you, 22. You want to share. I mean. I mean, he's, he's not even half my age. He's 22. Okay. But, but even though maybe he had a previous life or something. But. You came here first, you're Samis, and you would like to share your country, so we want you actually to distribute all the pillows back so everybody has a pillow. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure about that. Anymore. Exactly, this is my point. This is my point. Everybody has a pillow now, and this is what I'm talking about, that we have the Samis, we have all these people in pillow land, and now they're sharing the pillows, yeah. and they're happy about this, and what, what, what uh, this man or this man, or uh, they, but they don't want people to ruin the pillows, they want everybody to live together in pillow land. And yeah, and that's my major point, that he is the one who decides what it is to ruin a pillow. This, this girl maybe think it's really funny to take all the feathers out and play with them, because it's so nice. And then th that guy said, no, you can't do it, because I consider that is to destroy a pillow. He owns the language of a pillow land. But okay, let's do this. Okay, but, but let me just say one no. thing. I mean, okay. I think that in pillow land, what they should do is sit down and talk about how they want to use the pillows. Do we want to put out the pillows? Do we want to, I mean, they should agree on this. Yeah, okay, fine. Can you, can you send it to him? There you go. So you can, yeah. Oh, thanks. Uh, oh, sorry. So now we have split the room in two. We have two different societies now. Yeah. This is my society and this is your society. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what we need you to do is we will just say some arguments. And if you, the one that you sympathize with, please throw your pillow down to my space or to Victor's space. <laughs> okay. Um. So. Thank you so much. <laughs> go, go ahead. Give an argument. Give an argument. Okay. Um, it, it, here in my society, we believe we don't believe in, in modern uh, Western democracy. We believe that it has uh, become a capitalist dystopia and it is a play playground uh, for the free market. We believe that we need to live in small communities and only produce what is necessary for us. Okay. In my society, no pillows. In my society, we yes. believe that welfare is very important to be aware, and that it has given us uh, free healthcare, uh, free education, and so on. And we need to make it better. We, it's important to have uh, a working social, uh, economical politics that we can help our poor, weak, unemployed, and sick, and old persons, and that we need taxes for. Them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Your lost argument. I, I don't think that they can uh, change. Uh, David. Your lost arguments. Okay, sorry. Okay, well, um, here in my society, we, we don't believe that uh, it is uh, possible in a majority democracy uh, for the minorities to be heard. We think that we should have consensus democracy uh, so everybody can be heard and even the weak um, have a voice. Is this a representing pillow? Okay, now my last argument and the best one. Here in this society, we think it's really, really, really problematic that 2,000 reindeer owners should own half of Sweden. That's a democracy catastrophe. Okay. <laughs> what happened? Right. Okay, let's count the pillows. Okay. I think next time we need a wall because this yeah, is a problem. Yeah, it will be the work. Okay, it's really passive. It's great. Okay, let's count it. One, okay, two, one, two, three, one, two. Is this a pillow? I have a pillow. Oh, it's... 
It's a cup. Yeah, it's a pillow. It's, it's a pillow. No, it's minus half a pillow. It's minus half a pillow. Yeah. Okay, so that is this. <laughs> One here. Okay, so I only have, have six. I don't even I know these are actually mine. Yeah, <laughs> so you won. I won. It's very, thank you so much. It's very, <laughs> it's very interesting because it, it always change who winning when we do this performance. Maybe you just feel pity for my bad English, I'm, but I'm, I'm grateful for it. <laughs> uh, or maybe, yeah. We will now show you a five-minute clip uh, our, on our art artistic approach on this concept, uh, on this pro uh, performance. And then, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I think I'm going to turn off the light. Yeah, do it. I'm going to read it. Yeah. Okay. Now, give me more of this. My is from... Vi har meget stor kulturskrise, fordi at vi har fundet ud af, at hele det her greb, som vi har haft på den her film, eller på, den her, på det her projekt i det hele taget, vi virker fuldkommen forfejlet i forhold til, hvad vi skal lide ud af det Altså, ja, altså at man, man skulle vise, <coughs> hvordan samer blev eksploateret, eller eksploateret, altså hvordan de blev udnyttet gennem turismen, og hvordan de var tvunget til at holde fast i et bestemt billede af sig selv. Jeg synes, det der er kommet op som er nyt, det er deres indstilling. Altså selv deres egen indstilling til at beskæftige sig med turisme. For det er det mål, at vi så deres kultur på vores mål, som ikke er Men altså, man skal lidt assumere, hvor konstruktivt er det, at det er det, der ikke er til. Ja. Altså, hvis vi, det, det, det jeg tror, at begge løber for det, det er, at man nu vil gøre en... For at, eftersom at problematikken er så kompleks, mm. så vil man faktisk gøre en dokumentar om problematikken. Og da, hvis vi vil gøre det, så vi vil vi lige præcis det, vi ikke vil gøre, at vi kommer og fortæller en problematik eller historie, når vi er her i Sydøg. Men man kan jo godt gøre det på en sættere vigtig måde, synes jeg. Altså, ellers så kan man jo ikke nogen mennesker, der på nogen som helst måde kan gøre noget som helst. Overhovedet, om han kan være så nødvendig at lave en kritik. Altså, så kunne vi ikke engang lave noget, der handler om arbejderklassen, fordi det tilhører vi her, ikke? Altså, vi skal bare lade sig til det. Jo, det synes jeg er et rigtig stort forskel. Og hvis vi kigger på alle mulige måneder, det er klart, at det er en mistikker på, hvordan det er blevet sagt. Ja, ja. Så tror jeg, at det finnes en hel... Men det er jo igen det der med, at hvis det er at være en ting, og det også er at være en del af den urbane arbejderklasse, og det også er at være en masse... Jo, jo, så det også er... Men du synes jeg nok, at du skal gøre lidt mere indsøkkelse, end hvor i filmen er til det. Ja, det skal man også. Ja, og det er der problemet, og eftersom at det finnes mange dokumentarfilmer, mange jobmennesker som tror at de kan fortælle en sandhed. Hvis man ikke... Men så er det måske netop det, vi skal gøre, det er ligesom at, at drage hele processen ind i det her værk, så, man, altså sådan, så det mere handler om hvad man, altså en mis, mislykket og misforstået research. Ja. Eller altså... The fail project. Ja. Men lige nu, altså lige nu, hvis vi sidder og filmer det her, så er det jo totalt en kritik af os. Ja, ja. Som, også som kunstnere, der ved et kunstnere, men altså folk, der beskæftiger sig med det her inden for kunst. Ja, altså. ja det synes jeg jo. Det, det synes jeg det synes jeg jo. Og hvis vi viser det her på scenen, så vil det helt klart i hvert fald gøre, at, at der... Du, du synes jeg, hvis vi viser det her, så synes jeg, det er på slutningen. Men jeg synes, og det er jo det, jeg hele tiden har synes. Jeg har hele tiden synes, at der skulle blive en sløjfe op på det, sådan, så folk forstår, at det her, det mener vi ikke seriøst. Ja. Altså, jeg har, aldrig, jeg har aldrig været for, at folk skulle ud i den type. For det synes jeg simpelthen, altså det synes jeg er alt for alvorligt for mig, altså. Det er jo for det bare, for at man skal skrive sig. Nej, det er fordi jeg... Altså jeg synes, det er meget, meget mere politisk at gøre, altså at få givet vi. Det er bare sådan, det koster meget mere for en eller anden person. Men jeg tror måske, hvis vi slår for kameraen, det bliver nok ikke måske sådan.
Men då har vi ingen gång som lyckas. Men du har en gång som lyckas. Jag har följt att, att, att du visst är med att mm. Eller, jag följer att min karaktär, den, 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 den virkar. Men hvordan kan man så undgå? Hvad er den vej, som man så gå med min karakter for at undgå det? Hvad skal man gøre? Jeg tror, at det er, at du tar, tar, tar mere, eh, at, at du selv sætter dig i samme position på en helt absurd måde. Altså, at du transformerer dig selv til en samme, og, og, og du snakker skidt om andre samme, for hvilket tilrykker du meget samme. Mm. Og at, at dine idéer ikke som er det, som ikke findes. Mm. Og så har jeg også et lille problem med hvordan vi skal i, i filmen få ind de her seriøse samtale. Mm. Altså, de, de, de samtale, der ikke spiller en rolle. Ja. Men der, der tænker jeg, at vi som karakterer på scenen skal kommentere på det mere efter. Eller før? Altså det handler om bare, det, det, altså jeg tror hele tiden igen, det handler om en bevidsthed, der handler om, at vi må have en bevidsthed om, okay, nu, nu skifter vi over til noget seriøst. Hvad betyder det seriøst i så? Det betyder måske, at det her det ligesom er rigtig vidnesbyrd, eller det her det er faktisk mennesker, der lever i det, og vores karakterer så på en eller anden måde vælger at ignorere det, og stadigvæk søger efter den udkommunisme, og efter en eller marxistisk socialisme og arbejderromantik. Altså, mm. Thank you.